Barack Obama made a surprise visit to Baghdad today to offer support to U.S. troops. But a few of those troops are right here in Portland on a special humanitarian mission. They are accompanying an Iraqi mother and daughter looking for a miracle in Maine. It's a story you'll see only on 13. These are the familiar images from the front lines of Iraq. Keep moving. It has been a deeply complex war, one that can trigger many emotional reactions. It might surprise you that one of those emotions is happiness. It's going to be the happiest day of my life. And when, I, when I'm going to go back to Iraq and Tiba, it's going to be with me. It's going to be the happiest day of my life. May I have your attention, please? We first met this Iraqi mother and daughter last week when they arrived at the Portland jet port. This is Tiba, and she's coming in to have an evaluation on her heart. But their story begins six years ago, when Tiba was born with a serious, most likely fatal, heart condition. I suffered a lot. Suffered because no one in Iraq could help her daughter. A hospital in Baghdad performed a small surgery at 14 months that likely saved Tiba's life, but her condition continued to deteriorate. Saria had lost hope. And they told me her surgery is not going to get done in the, in the entire Middle East. It's hard to get it done in the Middle East. With no one to operate on her daughter and no way to pay to go out of the country, Saria didn't know where to turn, but her brother-in-law did. An officer with the Iraqi coalition forces he turned to American troops. Our unit works hand in hand with the Iraqi military. So through her uncle, he said, you know, he said, you know, I have a niece that's got this, you know, problem with her heart since birth. And can you help? The U.S. Special Forces began looking for ways to help Tiva and learned of the main foundation for cardiac surgery. But would Saria trust her daughter to the U.S. Army and doctors she had never even met? I was I don't have any difference. I, I just want to save a life for my daughter. So began the journey from Iraq to Maine, beginning with a two-hour convoy to take them from their village to the airport. Thank God for everything. While we are in the, on the way down on a convoy, I put the helmet and the, the, the vest to be protected. So I'm, I'm really <laughs> tough enough to do this. I will, I will sacrifice my life for, for my daughter's life. From an Iraqi mother's lips to an American soldier's heart. I imagine, you know, if, if my son or my daughter needed help and what it would be like to not be able to help them and then to have somebody come in, so it kind of chokes me up a little bit sometimes. I'm really uh, very appreciative for the Coalition Forces efforts and what they've done, and uh, I, I, I really don't know what to say, but I hope uh, that everything's go right, and it's with that. With, the, with all these efforts, and thank God for everything, and thanks for the coalition forces. Would Saria and Tiba get the miracle they were hoping for? Tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, we'll go inside the operating room at Maine Medical Center for Tiba's open heart surgery. We'll be right back. Imagine you are an Iraqi mother of six with a daughter with a life-threatening heart condition, a birth defect in which the two main arteries leaving the heart are reversed. The surgery she desperately needs is not performed anywhere in the Middle East. Such is the story of Saria and Tiba, and it might have ended in Iraq were it not for a friendship forged between American troops and Tiba's uncle, a soldier with the Iraqi coalition forces. Those U.S. troops brought Tiba to Maine, where the Maine Foundation for Cardiac Surgery agreed to try to save her life. We warn you, some of the video you are about to see is graphic. It is just a few hours after dawn, and the cardiac surgery team at Maine Medical Center is already hard at work. They have started this case early, knowing it will be a long one. This is uh, one of the more com complex repairs that we do. Nancy, I'm pushing just a little bit. You may notice it. Dr. Reed Quinn and his team are performing open heart surgery on a six-year-old girl who has made the journey all the way from Iraq. 
U.S. soldiers and Tiba's mother, Saria, have traveled with her from Baghdad to Maine, and now they anxiously wait as the hours go by. Clamp is on. Let's put the heart to sleep. Two and a half hours into the surgery, and Dr. Quinn and the surgical team have finished dissecting the heart. The heart is now being supported by the heart-lung bypass machine, and now the difficult surgical repairs begin. It will be several hours before we know if they're successful. Clamping. About six hours into the surgery, things are looking good, and they attempt to take Tiba off the heart-lung bypass machine. Not so fast. And we started coming off, and we noticed that there was another ventricular septal defect and a large hole that we hadn't appreciated. So we had to go back in through the um, heart, close that hole. Not long after, Tiba's heart is beating on its own, and Dr. Quinn allows me a little tour. The coronary arteries that we transferred are right here. The team is breathing again and more than relieved at the outcome. Yeah, she's um, doing really well. Um, she came off bypass and it's been very stable uh, since we've come off. I'm just giving her blood products so that she'll start to clot her blood again. We're all holding our breath. She's been on bypass for a long time today and it's time to get her heart working and see that the repair was a success. It's very good. Good function, very vigorous. That very large hole has been nicely closed. Yep. One, two, three. Tiba is not out of the woods yet. Even the transport to the intensive care unit can be dangerous. But Dr. Quinn is confident enough to deliver the news Saria has been longing to hear. Hello, how are you? Hello. How you doing? Hello, <laughs> Got some great news for you, okay? Well, thank you. There is no need to translate what comes next as Saria sees Tiba for the first time. After a few moments, she will look more closely at her hands and fingers, noticing that they are pink for the first time, not blue. Um, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. <laughs> Well, Saria wasn't speechless the next time we saw her, which was just yesterday. Tomorrow night at 6, we'll show you how Tiba is doing now and share what her mother has to say about the troops and doctors who saved her life. We'll be right back.